On today's show, two quiz show veterans return, but only one will move on. Who will it be? Will it be the Red Riots of South Portland High School? <laughs> or the Hawks of Marshwood High School? Find out next on High School Quiz Show, Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show, Maine is provided by the Helen and George Ladd Charitable Corporation, the Lincoln and Therese Filene Foundation, Plots Associates, Bernstein Schur, and by Take a moment and change your life. Join a Maine credit union. At a credit union, you're an owner, and a credit union gives back to its owners. Contact your local Maine credit union. It's your moment. Own it. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. With Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, you get more than a health plan. You get a partner. With benefits built around local needs, they're helping communities across Maine get healthier and happier. Visit harvardpilgrim.org to learn more. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show, Maine. I'm Shannon Moss. Both of today's schools have been with us before. Marshwood High School in South Warwick is making their third appearance and hope to be our first repeat champion, having won the crown in season one. But South Portland High School hopes this is the year they make their first run at the championship. Only one can move on. So let's meet our teams and get things started. We're going to start with Marshwood. We have Noble, Gabby, Jake, and Jay. Our alternates are Elena and Nathan with their coach, David Leitz. And for South Portland, we have Eric, Nick, Aaron, Shippen, with alternates Quinn and Kyla, and they are coached by Jessica Kaplan and Drew McNeely. And judging today, we have two judges, Angela Absher and Thomas McLaughlin. Always good to see you both. This competition, it has four rounds. We have the toss-up the head-to-head, -head, a category round, and the lightning round. And we're going to start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points. This is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players, though, you must wait for me to complete the question before you buzz in. If one team answers incorrectly, the other team will get a chance to answer. So, players, are we ready? Let's get started. Jupiter is the Roman equivalent of what Greek god? Eric. Zeus. Zeus is the answer. Name the only New England state that does not have a seacoast. Nick. Vermont. Vermont is the correct answer. What novel set during the Civil War was tentatively titled after its last line, Tomorrow is Another Day? Uh, Jake. Gone with the Wind. Gone with the End is the correct answer. What teacher of the deaf is credited as the inventor of the first practical telephone? Nick. Alexander Graham Bell. That's the answer. In the musical West Side Story, Riff is the leader of the Jets and Bernardo is the leader of what rival gang? Nick. The Sharks. That's the answer. Who served two terms as George Washington's vice president? Nick. John Adams. John Adams is correct. One of Johnny Cash's biggest hits, A Boy Named Sue, was written by what author of the poetry collection Where the Sidewalk Ends? Jay. Shel Silverstein. That's the right answer. What U.S. space station fell to the earth in the thousand pieces on July 11th, 1979, attracting worldwide media attention? Noble. The Challenger. That is incorrect. South Portland, want to give it a try? Nick. The Columbia. Skylab is the answer to that question. We have a video question right now if you want to take a look at your monitor. Hello. I'm Justin Dimmel. I'm a math teacher educator at the University of Maine. Here's my question for you. In space, like the virtual space I'm in right now, 
What figure can be defined as the set of points that are equidistant from a given point? J. A sphere? Yes, sphere is the correct answer. Frogs, toads, and newts belong to what class of vertebrates that can live both on land and in water? Eric. Amphibians. That's the right answer. The Parliament of Canada is located in what capital city? J. Quebec. That is incorrect. South Portland? Nick. Ottawa. Ottawa is the answer. Unlike the mineral-rich crust and mantle, the Earth's core is made almost entirely of metal, specifically what two metallic elements? Shippen. Iron and nickel. That's the answer, or answers. With fewer than 600,000 people, what state has the lowest population in the U.S.? Nick. Wyoming. Wyoming is the answer. We got a math question. There are 10 boys in a class of 25 students. In lowest terms, what is the ratio of girls to boys? Noble. Three to two. That's the answer, three to two. A sprain happens when you stretch or tear what tough fibrous tissue that connects bones to other bones? Aaron. A tendon. That is incorrect. Marshwood? J. A ligament. That's the right answer. Eric Honecker was forced to resign as the leader of East Germany in what year that also marked the fall of the Berlin Wall? Nick. Uh, 1988. That is incorrect. Marshwood, want to give it a chance? Yes, Jay. 1989. 1989 is the answer. What five-letter word describes a tie score of 40 to 40 in tennis? Nick. Deuce. Deuce is right. All right, we got a picture question for you if you want to look at your monitor. This icy moon of Jupiter is believed to have a salty ocean beneath its surface, much like ours here on Earth. Some scientists think it could be the most promising place in our solar system outside of Earth to have conditions suitable for life. What is the name of this moon? J. Europa. That's the answer. In physics, what does F signify in the equation F equals MA? J. Force. Force is right. Since 1947, India and Pakistan have been locked in a bitter dispute over what region that borders Tibet? Nick. The Kashmir region. That's right. In the classic children's book, Charlotte's Web, what is the name of the pig who is saved by a spider? J. Wilbur. Wilbur's the answer. To save money on lawn care during World War I, what president brought in sheep to graze the White House grounds? Nick. Wilson. Wilson's the answer. In a graduating class, the student with the highest rank is the valedictorian. What term refers to the student with the second highest rank? Eric. Salutatorian. That's right. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with how many pairs of parallel sides? Shippen. One. One's the answer. Approximately 90% of the atmosphere's ozone occurs in which layer that lies between the troposphere and the mesosphere? J. Stratosphere. That's the answer. What is the southernmost of the three Baltic states? Nick. Lithuania. That's the answer. What 1990 act requires businesses to generally allow service animals wherever the public has access? Americans Noble. with Disability Act. That's the right answer. What story by Daniel Keyes is about a mentally challenged man whose IQ is tripled as a result of an experimental operation? J. Flowers for Algernon. That's the answer. Landmark in the history of animation. What short film from 1928 starring Mickey Mouse was the first Disney cartoon with synchronized sound? Jake. Steamboat Willie. That's correct. Steamboat Willie. The Kennebec River originates from what 120 square mile lake in northern Maine? J. Moosehead Lake. Moosehead Lake is correct. Derived from the Greek word for horn, what is the structural protein of hair, nails, and skin? Jake. Keratin. That's the answer. In 1584, what English explorer was granted a charter from Queen Elizabeth to establish the Roanoke Colony, later known as the Lost Colony? J. Sir Walter Raleigh. That's the answer. One of the world's earliest civilizations developed in what historical region in the Middle East that means land between rivers? Eric. Mesopotamia. That's correct. What Swedish word that means sandwich table refers to a buffet of various hot and cold dishes? A smorgasbord. Is the, and that is the buzzer that singles the end of round 
Oh my gosh, look at the score. Marshwood 160, South Portland 160. A fantastic start. This is going to be a great game. Can't wait to meet our players. We're going to do that next and go head to head when we come back. <laughs> Trees are down, the power is down, but you're not powerless. The mobile app from Safety Insurance can help you file a claim. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life storms. The head-to-head -head round is next, but first we'd like to take a little bit of a break and see how their minds work with <laughs> a very special question. All right, players, here it is. When you go to retire, which author, living or dead, would you choose to write your biography and why? Noble, we'll start with you. Um, I like Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Al Lawati Al Tanji Ibn Ubud Tatin, Ibn Battuta, otherwise known as Ibn Battuta, to write my biography because he was like a Muslim scholar from Morocco who traveled all across the world and wrote um, a great book about like all of his travels and was basically like pioneered the art of traveling and I thought it was really interesting so I'd like him to write my biography because I think he's a good guy to I'd like him to write mine too then. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> all right, thank you Noble. What about you Gabby? I would choose Jane Austen because I really love her writing style. Yeah. All right, Jake? I'd probably go with Stephen King because I think he's very interesting and then there's the main connection. Uh, right, of course, which would be nice. Hope it doesn't take any liberties though with your <laughs> biography. All right, Jay? I would choose J.R.R. Tolkien because he writes beautiful prose and is just a literary legend. Absolutely. All right, what about you, Eric? I would choose my mom, Jen, because she's been with me all my life, and uh, I've read some of the things she's written, and they're really good. Oh, I love that. Mom, are you in the audience, Mom? Oh, it's fantastic. All right, Nick? Uh, I'd go with Homer because he could probably turn stories about how I struggled to get out of bed in the morning <laughs> about me fighting w vi epic battles against vicious sea serpents. Okay, I like it. All right, Aaron? I would go with George Vexy because he wrote Coal Miner's Daughter with Loretta Lynn, which is a very good autobiography. It's a classic. Shippen. Choose Laurie Milton. <laughs> Lovely lady. All right. Well, there you go. Great answers, all of you. Thank you so much. All right. We will bring the players out for our head-to-head -head match in just a second. But we want you to see how you do with your luck with the Maine's Credit Union's Question of the Week. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jake Holmes from Maine's Credit Unions. We'll go back to high school quiz show Maine in a moment, but first, let's see how you do on this week's question of the week. Which of the following Maine-related images have not been featured on bank-issued currency or coins in the United States? Portland headlight, the Maine state seal, or a ship being built? Think it over and we'll have the answer later in the show. We are about to go head to head. We've got South Portland to my left, Marshwood to my right. Gentlemen, you want to shake hands before we get started? Best of luck. You too. All right. I love that. In this round, you get 10 points for correct answers. Incorrect answers, though, will cost you 10 points. You do not have to wait for me to finish asking the question before you buzz in. We're going to set this clock at 90. And here we go. Nicknamed the North Star State, what U.S. state is located directly north of Iowa? Minnesota, in the late 19th century, what post-impressionist painted the starry night? Marshwood. Van Gogh. That's correct. What is the first element on the periodic table? Yes, Hydrogen. South Portland. Hydrogen is the answer. In 1864, Union forces under General Sherman captured and burned what Georgia city? Yes, South Portland. Savannah. That's incorrect. It's Atlanta. An acute angle measures less than how many degrees? Marshwood. 90. Yes. What popular board game is named after the part of the skull that houses the brain? Yes, South Portland. Cranium. Cranium is the answer. What South American country gets its name from the Latin word for silver? Argentina. What Jewish holiday is also known as the Miracle of Maccabees? Marshwood. Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the answer. All of Shakespeare's plays are divided into how many acts? Five. On March 28, 1854, during the Crimean War, Britain and France declared war on what country? Russia is the answer. What bowl-shaped volcanic depression is named after the Spanish word for cauldron? Yes, Marshwood. Caldera. That's right. Approximately one-fifth of all fresh water entering the world's oceans comes from what river? Marshwood. Amazon. Amazon's correct. Who was the Prime Minister of Great Britain at the start of World War II in 1939? 
Yes, Marshwood. Neville Chamberlain. That's correct. A character named Marlo is the protagonist, and that is the buzz. Let's take a look at our scores right now. Marshall with 220 points. South Portland with 170 points. Category round is coming up next. Stay with us, everyone. Next up is the category round with the following choices. Horse Sense, Elementary, My Dear, Small Talk, Land Ho, A Little Bit Country, and Mountain Majesties. The category round has five questions with increasing point values. Now, players, you can confirm with your teammates, but once you buzz in, I am going to need to know your answer. And also, like in the toss-up round, if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given the chance to answer. So, South Portland, you're behind by a little bit. Where would you like to go? Uh, a little bit country for 10, please. A little bit country. Okay, this category, questions about female country music legends. This is for 10 points. The world's first cloned animal, a sheep, was named after what country superstar who recorded Jolene and 9 to 5? Aaron. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is the answer. We'll go and a little bit country again, we're please. Gonna keep, all right, I like it. A little bit country for 15 points. What American Idol winner recorded the 2005 album, Some Hearts, the best-selling solo female debut album in country music history? Jake. Kelly Clarkson. That is incorrect. South Portland? Aaron. Carrie Underwood. That's the answer, and you still uh, have control of the board. A little bit country again, please. I thought you were gonna say that. All right, country music fan? <laughs> All right, this is for 20 points. Dubbed the queen of country pop, what Canadian singer of man, I feel like a woman, is the best-selling female artist in the history of country music? Aaron. Shania Twain. That's the answer. Take it again, please. <laughs> All right, a little bit country. This is for 25 points. What former hairstylist became a star with hits like Stand By Your Man and D-I-V-O-R-C-E? Aaron. Tammy Wynette, and I'll finish it out, please. This is your category. All right, the Aaron category. <laughs> a little bit country, this is for 30 points. Coal Miner's Daughter is the title of an autobiography by what legend known as the first lady of country music? Aaron. Loretta Lynn. That's the answer. Thank you. We'll Here go we with Mountain Majesties, please. All right, here we go. New category. This is for 10 points. Questions about mountains. Visible from Tokyo on a clear day, what beautiful cone-shaped mountain is actually three separate volcanoes, one on top of the other? Nick. Mount Fuji. That's the answer. Okay, South Portland. What do you think? A small talk for 10, please. All right, small talk. This is a category where questions are about abbreviations, and this is for 10 points. The Republican Party in the United States is called the GOP, an abbreviation that stands for what? Jay. Grand old party. That's it. And now, Marshall, do you have control of the board? What are you thinking? I'll take small talk. All right, small talk. This is for 15 points. Louise Brown made history in 1978 as the world's first test tube baby. She was conceived via IVF, which stands for what? Gabby. In vitro fertilization. That's correct. What do you think? Where would you like to go, Gabby? Uh, small talk, please. Small talk for 20 points. Cell phones and many other types of electronics use a highly efficient, long-lasting light source called an LED, which stands for what? J. Light emitting diode. That's right. All right, what do you think? Where do you want to go? Small talk, please. All right, small talk. 25 points. A computer that has 8 megabytes of RAM has approximately 8 million bytes of memory that programs can use. What does RAM stand for? Noble. Random access memory. That's correct. What would you think? What do you think? Where do you want to go? Small talk. All right, we're doing small talk. This wraps up this category for 30 points. Most scuba divers know that scuba is actually an acronym that stands for what? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. That's a mouthful. All right, Marsh, would you still have control of the board? Uh, let's go to Mountain Majesties. Mountain Majesties for 15 points. In 2015, President Obama used his executive power to restore what native Alaskan name to Mount McKinley? Jake. Denali. That's correct. What do you want to Mountain go Mountain Majesties. All right, we're going to continue. Mountain Majesties, this is for 20 points. What mountain system extends approximately 7,500 miles from the southern tip of South America all the way to Panama? Jay. The Andes. That's correct. Am I guessing we're going to continue with, or you want to do something different? Mountain, oh, Majesties? mountain Majesties? All right. Please. For 25 points, the Appalachian Mountains extend from the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador to what southern U.S. state? Shippen. Georgia. That is incorrect. Marshwood? Jake. West Virginia? That's Alabama is the answer. So Marshwood, you still have control of the board. 
Uh, let's go to Mountain Majesties. Uh, we're going to wrap up this category for 30 points. What mountain in southern Russia is the highest peak of the Caucasus Mountains? Mount Elbrus is the answer. And Marshwood, you still have control of the board. Uh, let's go to Land Ho. Land Ho. This is a new category. Questions about explorers, and this is for 10 points. In the early 19th century, British naval commander Sir James Clark Ross discovered the Ross Sea and the Victoria Land region of what continent? J. Antarctica. That's correct. All right, what are you thinking? We'll take Land Ho. All right, we're going to take Land Ho. You guys don't like to jump around. That's okay. It makes it easier for me. This is for 15 points. What Viking explorer and founder of Greenland was the father of Leif Erikson? Eric. Eric the Red. That's correct, Eric. All right. Now, South Portland, you have control of the board. Where are we going? Elementary, my dear. Elementary, my dear. Okay, this is a new category. Questions about chemical elements, and this is for 10 points. Atomic number 17 refers to what element often added to drinking water supplies to prevent waterborne diseases such as cholera and typhoid fever? Shippen. Iodine. That is incorrect. Marshwood? Noble. Fluoride. It's chlorine. Chlorine is the answer. Okay, South Portland, you're still in control of the board? Horse sense, please. <laughs> Horse sense. A new category. Questions about horses in literature, and this is for 10 points. Boxer is a gullible workhorse who serves as an allegory for the Russian working class in what novel by George Orwell? Gabby. Animal Farm. That's correct. What would you like next? Um, Land Ho for 20. Land Ho for 20 points. In 1673, Father Jacques Marquette became the first European to chart the Mississippi River. He was accompanied by what French cartographer? Louis Joliet, or Louis Joliet is the answer to that one. Okay, where are we going, Marshwood? You still have control of the board. Let's go to Land Ho again. Land Ho for 25 points. When Sir Edmund Hillary reached the summit of Mount Everest in 1953, he was accompanied by what Sherpa guide? Jake. Norgay. That's correct. Where are we going next? Uh, let's finish Land Ho. All right, we're going to finish Land Ho. This is for 30 points. What Norwegian explorer was the first to sail through the Northwest Passage and the first to reach the South Pole? Jay. Amundsen. That's correct. All right, what category is next? Uh, let's go to Horse Sense. Horse Sense. This is for 15 points. What unconventional red-headed girl lives with her horse Alfonso at Villa Vilcula in a series of books by Astrid Lindgren? Jay. Pippi Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking is the answer. What category next? We'll take horse sense. All right, for 20 points. A handsome black horse is a narrator of what Anna Sewell book that has been called the Uncle Tom's Cabin of the Horse? Black Beauty is the answer, and, and that is the buzzer. So that ends our category round. Let's take a look at our scores. Marshall with 365 points, South Portland with 260. And the lightning round is coming in up next, which means anything can happen. Of course, that is right after we have the answer to Maine's Credit Union's Question of the Week. Let's see how you did with the Maine's Credit Union's Question of the Week. The question was, which of the following Maine-related images have not been featured on a bank-issued currency or coins in the United States? Is it Portland Headlight, the Maine State Seal, or a ship being built? Well, we may have tricked you a bit with this one. Of the three, Portland Headlight has not appeared on any currency in the U.S. The Bicentennial Quarter from 2003 featured Pemiquid Point Light, not Portland Headlight. The Maine State Seal and a ship being built can be seen on paper notes issued by Maine banks for the federal government in the 1800s. Okay, we are heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay. This is the lightning round. Players, remember, you get 20 points for correct answers, but incorrect answers will cost you 20 points. So let's set that clock, and here we go. Name the largest of the Earth's five oceans. Nick. Pacific. Correct. The saying, first do no harm, is associated with what medical oath? Shippen. Hippocratic oath. That's right. In 1836, Texas declared its independence from what country? Nick. Mexico. That's correct. In Western astrology, the bull represents what sign of the zodiac? Jake. Taurus. That's right. What deposed queen was executed during the French Revolution? Jay. Marie Antoinette. That's correct. The Nehru jacket is named after a prime minister of what country? 
India is the answer. Mark Twain, like his characters Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, they were from what U.S. state? Missouri. The U.S. interstate highway system has been called the greatest public works project in history. It was established under what U.S. president? Nick. Eisenhower. That's correct. Nephrology is the study of what bean-shaped organs that help filter and clean your blood? Nick. Kidney. That's right. What state that borders New York is the most densely populated state in the country? Jay. New Jersey. That's right. When a volcano erupts, the resulting explosion shoots magma out into the atmosphere. At this point, the magma becomes known as what, Jay? Lava. Lava is the answer. The undersea tunnel known as the Channel connects England to what country? Nick. France. France is right. What woodwind instrument favored by Benny Goodman derives its name from the Latin for clear? Jay. Clarinet. That's the answer. And that is the buzzer. Wow, what a game. Marshall with 465 points is moving on to the quarterfinals this week. South Portland, great game with 380 points. We certainly hope we see you next year. And we hope to see all of you again for our next show. And be sure to tune in as York takes on Oxford Hills. Thanks so much for watching High School Quiz Show Maine. Yay! Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by the Helen and George Ladd Charitable Corporation, the Lincoln and Therese Filene Foundation, Plots Associates, Bernstein Schur, and by... Take a moment and change your life. Join a Maine credit union. At a credit union, you're an owner, and a credit union gives back to its owners. Contact your local Maine credit union. It's your moment. Own it. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. With Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, you get more than a health plan. You get a partner. With benefits built around local needs, they're helping communities across Maine get healthier and happier. Visit harvardpilgrim.org to learn more. And by viewers like you. Thank you.